So today we're checking our hives and we're looking for Varroa mites. Now this is a pest uh, that comes inside of the hives. They like to be able to burrow inside of a cell, especially a larger cell like a drone cell, and they multiply. They actually feed off of the blood of the bees. They'll attach themselves to the bees. And an overload of mites can kill a hive. And oftentimes in the winter time or in the springtime when a hive hasn't made it through, sometimes it's because of mites. So it's really important for the beekeeper to be able to check to see, does the hive have mites? Now there's different ways to do that. The way that we're gonna be doing it today is by doing something called an alcohol wash. And we're gonna go through the steps so you can see exactly what that is. And we'll make sure that you can see a good picture or a video of what a mite actually looks like. When we do this alcohol wash, I'll be able to walk you through kind of step by step. But the first thing to do whenever you're doing an alcohol wash is know where your queen is because we're actually going to be killing some bees. We're gonna be killing about 300 bees to be able to do this. And though nobody likes to kill bees, especially beekeepers, it is a bit of a sacrifice to be able to determine how many Varroa mites your hive may have. And then of course you can treat accordingly, which then can save thousands and thousands and thousands of bees. So there's a real importance of checking your hive for mites. First thing to do, know where your queen is because you don't want to kill your queen. So the queen is actually on this bar right here which I've isolated away from the rest of the hive so I know that I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to kill her by accident and the queen we can see is actually right here right where my finger is you can see right there she's longer than the other bees her thorax is black right there we can see she's kind of moving slowly that's our queen right there so we're isolating her away from the rest of the bees and we'll just set her there. And then once I'm done, I can put her back in where I want her to be, which is in the brood nest, which of course is where she's laying her eggs. Now, speaking about the brood nest, when you take the bees, those are the bees that you want to be able to take from where the brood is, where you're seeing cat brood, you're seeing larvae, you're seeing eggs, because again, that's where the mites like to hang out, so to speak. So what we're gonna do is, we know that we have some cat brood on this bar right here. We can see it here. We know that there's some egg in there and some larva in here. So we're gonna actually take some bees from this hive over here. And so we'll go this way. And what we're actually going to do is take about a half a cup of bees and a half a cup of bees is about 300 bees. So we're gonna just release them right into this bowl like this. Well, first, first things first is I'm gonna get my rubbing alcohol and I'm just gonna place it in a mason jar like this. Gloria might wanna come in a little bit closer for some of this. Get that in there. So you wanna put enough that does drown your bees and kill your bees. And again, as a beekeeper, that's really difficult, but you're doing this sacrifice for the, for the good of the whole colony. So I'm gonna shake some of the bees in here. And that's probably plenty. Get that bar back. So we want about half a cup of bees. So I'm actually using a measuring cup. This is a, a cup, a full cup. So I'm taking about half and I'm putting my bees in there. And this is what I'm gonna do to shake. So again, you gotta shake for, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so. Uh, because you do want those Varroa mites to drop off of the bees. That's really what you're looking to do because you want them to drop through and then we're gonna strain this so that we're just looking at the liquid to see if there's any Varroa mites that have fallen off. Now again, Varroa mites are a problem. There are pests in beehives. It is something that you wanna control. We do know that there's different types of treatment for Varroa mites. And if you spoke to 10 different beekeepers, you probably would get 10 different answers. So I kind of have my own strategies when it comes to kind of making sure that our hives are not overloaded with mites. There are different types of treatments. The treatments, of course, you want to make sure are not harmful to your honey. And the way that I treat, it's not at all. So I just keep shaking because, again, you want to get those mites off of the um, off of the bees you want them to fall on the bees now what's the ratio you're looking for well with about a half a cup of bees you're looking for 
no more than three mites. So again, in half a cup, we assume that there's about 300 bees. So you want to have no more than one mite per 100 bees. All right, so I think that's probably shaken enough. So what I do at this time, just take the cover and you'll notice there's no holes in that cover. So I'm switching my cover now to a screen cover. And so what this will allow to do is that any mites will be able to fall through. I'll show you the cover that I've made. So just with some of this hardware cloth here, the bees will stay in the mason jar. The liquid will drain out uh, and, and hopefully the mites will drain out as well. So we're just gonna, so we'll just put that over side here. And again, there's nothing in this jar. So we'll just pour out the liquid. Again, you wanna make sure you get all that liquid out, all that rubbing alcohol out. And then if you really want to be careful, so you're just really kind of kind of washing them through, making sure you do get mites if there are any in there. Again, you hope to see no mites. You hope to see no more than three for sure. More than three, then you have to do something. You have to treat your hive to be able to kill that pest. And again, they really enjoy going into larger cells. So the drone cells, they'll go in there They'll multiply, of course, and it's a problem. So I'm gonna have a quick look here myself, and I actually see three mites. Now, to be able to do this with the camera, we're gonna, we're gonna try our best. What you're looking for is a very small brown dot. So the dot probably not much bigger than a grain of, um, of, uh, um, um, of grain of rice, sorry if I could say that but it's brown in color. So I'm gonna hold it up and Gloria, maybe you can put the, maybe you can put it underneath. We'll go underneath if we can, or I can move it this way and we'll just let it see if it um, just kind of focuses. Again, you're looking for three brown dots. Not sure, Gloria, if you're seeing that on the screen. Okay, good, perfect. She's nodding, yes, so. And there we go. So this hive would meet the, thre the threshold of acceptable amounts of mites in your hive. Now, the mites don't contaminate um, the honey. It does absolutely nothing negative to the honey whatsoever, but it does something negative to the bees. And again, they like to, to they burrow inside of that cell before it's capped. They multiply in there. And then of course they attach themselves to the bees, typically on the back of the bees, and they suck the blood out. And then, you know, they can really infest your hive very quickly quickly and it really kills it can kill the hive it really can as time moves on however you know we do hope that we have more bees that are mite resistant so that even if there are mites they coexist and if we think of beehives in nature of course they're living in logs and you know you know fallen trees and, and so on and so forth and there's lots of bugs there and they do coexist However, the mite has been quite quite a problem for, for beekeepers and for the bees, obviously. And so you wanna make sure that you're treating. So this hive would meet the threshold saying that there's one uh, Varroa mite per 100 bees. It's acceptable because we had 300 bees and we saw three mites. However, it's really up to the beekeeper. You wanna keep checking your hive. And as you check your hive, if you're noticing that you're beyond that threshold of three uh, for 300 bees, then you certainly would wanna do some treatment treatment. So anyhow, this is how you do an alcohol wash. There are other ways. Some folks use um, icing sugar, that very fine sugar. They'll roll them that way. Um, it's, it's not such a, um, I, I guess it's not a process that would always give you the accurate results for all kinds of reasons that it may not get the, the mite off of the bee just with the, with the sugar, like the alcohol would. The alcohol is definitely going to release that, um, uh, that varroa mite off of the bee. But as you do your own research and as you, you know, you d d kind of discover what it is that, that you're comfortable in doing for your own hives, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to pick what works well for you. The important part is know if your hives have varroa mites and if they do, do something about it to keep your hive healthy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.